the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You're very welcome to Mass today on the seventh Sunday of Easter. And to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries today, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You have poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. You are the Good Shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously hear our supplications, O Lord, so that we who believe that the Saviour of the human race is with you in your glory may experience, as he promised, until the end of the world, his abiding presence among us, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After Jesus was taken up into heaven, the Apostles went back from the Mount of Olives, as it is called, to Jerusalem, a short distance away, no more than a Sabbath's walk. And when they reached the city, they went to the upper room where they were staying. There were Peter and John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot, and Jude son of James. All these joined in continuous prayer together with several women, including Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brothers. The Word of the Lord. The Lord is my light and my help. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Before whom shall I shrink? There is one thing I ask of the Lord, for this I long, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to savour the sweetness of the Lord, to behold his temple. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken. See his face. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. If you can have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad, because you will enjoy a much greater gladness when his glory is revealed. It is a blessing for you when they insult you for bearing the name of Christ, 
because it means that you have the Spirit of glory, the Spirit of God resting on you. None of you should ever deserve to suffer for being a murderer, a thief, a criminal, or any informer. But if any one of you should suffer for being a Christian, then he is not to be ashamed of it. He should thank God that he has been called one. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your hearts will be full of joy. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that your Son may glorify you. And through the power over all mankind that you have given him, let him give eternal life to all those who have entrusted to him. And eternal life is this, to know you, the one true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth and finished the work that you gave me to do. Now, Father, it is time for you to glorify me with the glory I had with you before ever the world was. I have made your name known to the men you took from the world to give me. They were yours and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, at last, they know that all you have given me comes indeed from you. For I have given them the teaching you gave to me, and they have truly accepted this, that I have come from you, and have believed that it was you who sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they belong to you. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine and in them I am glorified. I am not in the world any longer, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. The Gospel of the Lord. We just heard there in the second reading from St. Peter, and he says, If you have some share in the sufferings of Christ, be glad, because future glory awaits you. Jesus asks us, in another part of the Gospel, to take up our cross. However, there is no more unwelcome message in the modern age than to be told to take up our cross and follow him. Indeed, the contrary is true. Everyone wants to shed their cross, dump it, hide it, cure it, take it out, but not carry it. Many people go to healing services for the express purpose of shedding their cross, and they think there is something wrong with the healer when nothing happens to them. What is wrong, they ask. Why should I have to suffer? I'm no worse than anybody else. Why should this happen to me? How can God be a good God and let this happen? Why does he not intervene to stop it? Is there a God at all? What is the cross, anyway? Our cross is the whole burden of being a fallible human being in a sinful and sinning world and all the consequences of this. It is the acceptance of oneself and others, warts and all. It is the defects of my character and personality that must be submitted for help, healing and transformation. 
It involves the whole conglomeration of hurts and sensitive areas due to past experiences that were painful and even painful to remember. It is all the no-go areas that makes living with me difficult for other people. Our cross also comes from other people with whom we live and work. We brush up against their faults and failings and fail to realise that others may not be on our wavelength for the simple reason that they are different from us in character, personality, upbringing, giftedness, and indeed their outlook on life. The cross is the neighbour who came to you when you least needed it and gave you problems that you never even asked for. But even on relationships within the family, how much suffering can be found there? Witness the pain of parents as they agonize over the behavior of their children. How much heartbreak there is in the infidelity of a spouse. To be betrayed in love is to be outraged at the very core of our being. Yet millions of adults live with this pain today, and children also, who are forced to choose between one parent and another when those who love them most break their centre of security in the home. Then there are other crosses. The long illness of a family member, the dreadful tragedy of the loss of life due to drugs, suicide or murder, just to name a few. We, as fellow Christian pilgrims, must walk by their side, lovingly supportive, listening, praying, and compassionately being there for them. We must allow the sufferer to find their way as we quietly help them to carry their cross, not by being pious, or by being a Job's comforter, giving all our theories and reasonings that make no sense in the face of this suffering, but by imitating instead someone like Simon of Cyrene, who wordlessly helped Jesus carry his dreadful burden to its conclusion on Calvary. However, I don't think it is possible to help another person to carry their cross if we do not even recognize our own, let alone carry it. Since this is so then, it is now clear why it is a fruitless exercise to try and run away from one's cross. To hide it, or to shed it. To do so is to run away from life, to choose non-life, which leads to emotional and spiritual death, and to refuse the challenges of living on planet Earth as a fully alive person, one who leaves their footprints in the sands of time. Keep safe, everyone, and God bless. As we celebrate together today, let us pray together. Last Thursday, we celebrated the feast of Jesus' entry into heaven as Saviour and Lord. 
We pray for unity in the Church, for reconciliation and new vision. Lord, hear us. We pray for all farewells and homecomings among our families and in our community, and for all who have lost touch with loved ones and long for a reunion, especially during this coronavirus. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are full of tears and cannot imagine being happy again. We pray for the hardened and the callous, whose inner hurts have never yet been healed. We pray for wholeness and comfort and new life. Lord, hear us. We pray for the people of this parish. We also pray for the sick at home and in hospitals, especially those affected by the coronavirus, that God may heal them and strengthen their hope of eternal glory. Lord, hear us. We pause for a moment to present our private intentions to God our Father. Our Lady came through much sorrow to her grand joy in the resurrection of our Son. Let us ask her to pray for us and with us as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, trusting in your great love for us, we bring you these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual dream. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands, for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God.
through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all the disciples, and he was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers of the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewful, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your Church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the Resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope of the coming.
coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Father, I pray that they may be one, as we also are one. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Hear us, O God our Saviour, and grant us confidence that through these sacred mysteries there will be accomplished in the body of the whole Church as Paul went what has already come to pass in Christ our Head, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you, and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and indeed the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ.